afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. Ali Korman, Ed Carson here with a look at the action today, including a mixed session, but the NASDAQ was able to close well off its lows and found support where you wanted to see it. Yeah, it was an interesting session. We're going to go over that, but uh, I want to take a look at a few stocks, uh, Xpeng, Pioneer National Natural Resources, and Snowflake. Okay, we'll get to those first. A uh, look at the major indexes. So here is the NASDAQ composite finishing the day down about a half a percent, but cutting its loss by about half. And we also had the S&P 500 turning green for the day up about two tenths of a percent. The Dow leading on the upside up about six tenths of a percent. And the Russell 2000 finished with a loss of about one tenth of a percent. So the NASDAQ coming down to that 21 day line, but at least for now, finding some support there. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, you expect to find it around the 21 day. It also found support above the November 10th low. So, you know, we really haven't fallen that much on the major indexes. You look at the major indexes, even the Russell, it's like, yeah, it's down, but it's like, we're not, you know, nothing catastrophic. You know, that one, I mean, admittedly looks a little worse, but uh, the NASDAQ, the S&P and Dow, they're all, they've come back a little ways after some runs, and uh, no big deal. The Dow is, you know, right around its 21 day line. So it had, it had come off. But I mean, I think it's pretty clear that that broad base rally seems for back into sector rotation. It just makes it tougher because there definitely is a lot. There's a lot of big swings underneath. I mean, there's definitely been some really big moves, uh, mostly to the downside, some to the upside. And it just makes it a little trickier. Where's your edge? If you where do you know, in, an, in a steady uptrend like we had from mid-October through early November, stocks were generally, you know, were generally trending higher and it was generally across the board. So, you know, and now the situation where you have leading stocks falling 15, 20% in a given day, that just makes it trickier uh, to be uh, trading regressively in this kind of market. Right. So yeah, the index is uh, masking some of that weakness underneath the surface. But if you take a look at growth stocks in particular, and an index that tracks that is the IBD 50. And so the FFTY ETF really getting hit hard this week off of the lows, but FFTY coming all the way down to its 200 day line down about 1.6% for the day. And so far this week, just two trading days <laughs> down over 6%. So like you're saying, Ed, a, a lot of these high growth names taking pretty big hits this week. Yeah. And even before these two days, you know, it had sort of fallen the prior week when, when the NASDAQ was surging to new highs because of those mega caps. So the growth right. stocks have actually been coming back a little bit. So it's not just that it was tech doing well, other sectors doing poorly. It was like 10 stocks doing well and everything else struggling. Now, now we have a new set of stocks coming up, but it's so it's it makes it difficult, you know. So uh, this is why a lot of people's portfolios, wow, there's some big losses, and yeah, they might have bounced off lows. You didn't know they were going to come off of lows, and you don't know that they're not going to sell off the next day. So it just makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess before we take a look at the three stocks that you mentioned, Ed, so we do have QQQ here, uh, roughly finishing about 5% above the 50-day line after getting extended as much as what, 8%? Over 8%, uh, yeah. <laughs> over, yeah, over 8% Monday morning. So we, we've definitely come in a little bit. And in the strongest market, strongest trending markets with that 21-day line, nicely above the 50 day line, that 21 day is an area that we really want to see some support. So, but do you think it's too early to tell if this 21 day line test is going to lead us right back up or is it going to take a, a little bit more time to hash out? I don't know. And that's part of the thing. Where's your edge? And I mean, you can make an argument that it might even be good if it didn't hold the 21 day line, that if it came down to maybe around the November 10th low and consolidated for a few weeks, I mean, really let the 50 day line catch up some more, let some new bases form because some of these stocks that have plunged, you know, yeah, they could bounce, but it, the charts look damaged. They need some time. So, I mean, you could argue that that would be a better thing, but the market's going to do what it's going to do. But, you know, you just have to react to what the market's doing. Yes, that, that's the key there. React to uh, what these charts are telling you instead of trying to make uh, a bunch of predictions. But uh, 
we do like uh, using history as our guide. But at any rate, uh, let's take a look at a stock in focus today on the upside, and that is XPUNG, XPEB, with a gain of over 8%, some heavy volume behind the move. And today's action fueled by the earnings report, so some strong revenue growth, Ed, and XPUNG is among many EV stocks that are getting more and more attention, it seems. So what do you think about the action here today? Yeah, I mean, this one was like, it seems it finally cleared, it seems, it seems like, at least for a day, all this pattern, because it's been going over this 4808 buy point for several weeks now. I mean, usually not holding it by the end of the day, but uh, so we'll see how that can go. You could argue, okay, it seems extended, but you could also argue that something like 50-50 just above the high of that little shelf, you know, right there, you know, it might be sort of a high handle entry, in which case it would still be in range, you know, depending on how you want to play it. Strong volume today is a strong growth. There's big sequential growth they expect in Q4. So another sign that those chip woes that have affected most automakers may be easing just a tad. Uh, so this is good. I mean, I think the concern would be like, sometimes you'll see, especially in markets that are tricky, you get that one day pop on earnings and then it can revert back to its old habits. Uh, but uh, this is definitely one that seems to be on, on the rise. Yes. And speaking of that sector rotation that uh, you mentioned, Ed, uh, energy stocks have been seeing that rotation into them with PXZ up about 4.2% today. Volume was, it looks like it was slightly above average. So presenting an early entry here as it forms a base. Yeah, it sort of rebounded from the 50 day line. If you drew a tight trend line, you could probably get something in there that basically, you know, shows that it breaks above. Um, you know, you could almost use the 21 day line as an, you know, just however you want to play, but you could, there's an early entry there. It's in this flat base, which is part of a base on base, you know, some nice action. Uh, again, it's just one of those tricky things. Energy stocks are always tricky because energy prices rose today. I mean, it's, it is nice. I mean, look, this stock came back down because oil prices had drifted lower to basically seven week lows. And now it is oil has come back up the past couple of days. Uh, today, President Biden said he's going to release strategic reserves, but it wasn't as big as some people had hoped and people had been expecting it. So oil did a sort of sell the rumor, buy the news kind of situation. And uh, so that was that was a positive. So it's just a question. Look, as long as oil goes up, this is probably PXD will work. I think that with new buys in general, especially with commodity plays or financial plays that are off the yields, you may want to treat them like swing trades where you take yeah, some partial, prof yeah. partial profits early on. Like if it goes up 5%, take, take a partial profit, like a third off, because you could easily see that reverse lower, you know, if commodities come around, it just seems in that kind of choppy environment that you may want to be really, really quick on the, on, on the jump. Yeah. To try to book some of those profits and software on the other end of the spectrum. This is the second day in a row where many software stocks have gotten hit quite hard. So Snowflake down another 3.4% today with volume picking up and yesterday uh, a big beating as well. So snow down over 12% for the week all the way down to its 10 week line, erasing quite a few weeks of gains. Now it seems like support at the 10 week line this week would be key, but I'm not sure uh, many shareholders would, who've been playing this run up, unless you got a really early entry, would want to still be holding it at this level because this is not uh, the type of pullback that we like uh, to add shares to a position to. It seems more like uh, at best, this is the left-hand side of a new base that needs to form. Yeah. And it might be left-hand side and then it drifts lower and we have earnings in a week. Look, if software wants to rebound next, you know, the next several days, this will probably get a bounce and it, you know, it, it very well might, but you know, that could be temporary. You know, we just don't know. I just, it's not a, an appealing looking chart. You know, it's one thing, you know, if you want to hold it, you can try it, you know, like, especially, but if you bought like a 328 around that area, you know, you sort of drew some trend lines where they're below that, or around that, that little area, you know, we're sort of finding support in that kind of spot. Gave up a lot of gains. They went up to 400. It's down to 344. I mean, that's a lot of the gains. You probably would have wanted to take at least some partial profits maybe yesterday. That makes it would be it easier to hold now, you know, because what was, you know, a 20%, 25% gain 
you know, is more like a 5% gain. That's, that's a lot uh, to, to give up. Um, you know, if you bought it way, way ago or off the bottom, that's a different story. Um, but I, you know, you just have to be managing risk and understand that this is not the same market we had a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, sharp declines, definitely some sell signals being triggered this week. And something that we've talked about is, uh, investors being conditioned this year to buy on the dip. But uh, Ed, what do you think the dangers of of that are? Because uh, there's a reason why when we talk about pullback buys, it's not off of the, you know, a 12% <laughs> we- weekly decline in heavy volume. We're looking for uh, orderly pullbacks to the to the 10 week line, not and that's not what this is. Yeah, it's not. It's not. You know, when you have that kind of sharp vertical drop like that, that just doesn't look like good action. I mean, honestly, we might, let's say this forms a normal base. We might still, some people on IBD Live might say, well, I really don't like the left-hand side of the base. And that's after several weeks of action. So even when it refers, I'm not, not saying that that will make it you know, terrible, but right now to come straight back up, that would look very odd. More Normally stocks do not do that. Does it happen? Sure, it does. And you know, if they have blowout earnings, they might surge thirty percent, and it's like, oh, see, I was so smart for buying it on the dip. But you do that, you know, uh, there's a lot of stocks that you think you're buying on the dip, and then things just keep get worse and worse. And where is your sell signal? If, you know, you uh, you know, you could say off the fifty day line, but are you going to, are you are you smart? Are you quick enough to, and disciplined enough to then sell when that when that trade does not work for you? Right, because uh, you're totally right. I think the other psychological factor at play here is, oh shoot, I'm down 12% now, but earnings are coming up next week. I have a lot of conviction in this. Hopefully I'll get a bounce, but uh, you don't want an upstart situation to I was uh, thinking about that. Yeah, I think if pulling that up is good because that one actually, okay, it's holding up you know, reasonably well. I mean, that one, is, that was more orderly. It wasn't great, but okay, it pulled back. No big deal, not really. This was over several weeks, not two days. Um, coming down. And then, you know, if it had been a strong, if, if the earnings report had been received well, then everybody said, see how smart I am. And, you know, and it would have worked, but this has happened. And then, and then it's, then you're sitting on a massive loss with earnings. So earnings, very treacherous. We saw some big gains today on earnings and some big losses. And that is when the market is choppier, the, then those losses can be, can be very severe. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, everyone, be careful out there. uh, And we'll be with you tomorrow morning on IBD Live to update you on the very latest uh, in terms of earnings, other news headlines, stocks on the move, the sector rotation that we are continuing to see. So we hope you tune in investors.com slash IBD Live. Thanks, Ed. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.